carburetor fine tuning using fish tank accessories. All right, a lot of you guys are gonna find this to be a very helpful video. So here's the situation. Car runs good. You got your carburetor and timing and your tune up and it's all good. Car runs, drives, does everything it's supposed to. And then you make a cam change and you put a cam in there, something hotter than stock. And now you can't quite get the thing to idle right. It's not dumping fuel, but you're not getting accurate adjustments out of the idle mixture screws and you've got you've had to turn the idle stop screw much higher much much further in let's say you've gone from a turn and a half to like two turns before you can get this thing to idle and it's rich and you can't lean it out so what happened and like I said this is really common so many people run into this so what happened was when you put the hotter cam in there and I've got to use generic generic terms here because this is really a broad video this like applies to like everything you put a hotter cam in and when you put the hotter cam in you lessen the amount of manifold vacuum or the amount of vacuum pulling against the throttle blades to pull air from around the throttle blades for it to idle on so in order to give this engine enough air to run on you had to open the throttle you had to go an extra half a turn an extra turn on the idle stop screw to get the car to idle but now what happened was instead of just pulling fuel from the idle passage the idle mixture passage as it's intended now what you're doing is you've opened the throttle blades and you're pulling idle from the transfer slot and the transfer slot think of it it's an intermediate fuel circuit it's supposed to cover the ground the middle ground between closed throttle only pulling fuel from the idle circuit and open throttle pulling fuel through the main circuit to the boosters and the jets and all. So when you opened the throttle to compensate for the lack of vacuum, what you did was you uncovered part of the transfer slot. And now you're fat because it's pulling fuel through there and you can't get a clean, a clean adjustment, a clean accurate adjustment out of the mixture screws. This is so common. And you'll know this is happening because You'll make a like you'll make a run to, to check the plugs and the plugs look great. The coloring on them is good, but if it idles for any amount of time, let's say you're stuck in traffic or uh, you just leave it sitting idle, it'll start to get fat, it'll start to get lazy. You'll give it gas and you'll get a little puff of black smoke out of it before it cleans up. And you can't turn the idle mixture screw down enough to get it to clean out. This is what's going on. You've got the throttle too far open and you're pulling fuel through the transfer slot. So, there are a couple of, by the way, if you ever noticed flipper cars, you ever see flipper, you ever see like a, a flipper hot rod muscle car and it's always got a really big cam in it, they always have an MSD box. It's, it's like a, it's like standard equipment for a flipper car. They have an MSD box and it's exactly for this reason. They put a big cam in it so it goes bump, 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 bump and people want that but it fouls the plugs at idle. So they throw an MSD in there and blast a bunch of, of spark at it, you know, the multi-spark at idle to keep the plugs clean and keep the thing from fouling out. All right, so back to this. You've got a couple of ways that you can solve this issue. One is to open, slightly open, the secondary throttle blades. Now remember, there is no transfer slot on the secondary side. The transfer slot is only on the primary side. So you can open the blades just ever so slightly to get that extra air in. The downside to that is that in order to make any adjustments, any air adjustments to the secondary side, you've got to take the carburetor off, flip it upside down, and if you look inside this recessed hole right here, you'll find the throttle stop. This is where you would you adjust the, the positioning of, the, of the, the secondary throttle blades through there. So any change you want to make, you've got to pull the carburetor apart, pull the carburetor off, flip it upside down, and make your adjustments through there. Mm, that's like a lot of work. Another way to do it, in a more extreme case, like you don't want to do this if, if it's just, you're right on the edge. It's just a little fat. If it's a lot fat, let's say you got a big cam in the thing, that's where you start to drill holes in the throttle blades to let a little extra air in that way. So you create a controlled vacuum leak 
remember now, position, throttle position, gives you the air around the outside. But now when you open the throttle position enough to let air through, we're uncovering the transfer slot. So keeping the throttle closed and then letting it pull air from instead of around the outside, pull air through the center, that's why you would drill holes. In a mild case, you would drill holes just on the primary side. If it's like a radical full race deal and you can't get it clean, then you would drill all four. But again, now I see that's an extreme case and there's trial and error involved in that too. Every time you, you want to make a change, you got to, you know, drill it a little bit bigger, take it apart, drill a little bit bigger, take it apart. It, it becomes a thing. And then, of course, if you go too far, now, what are you going to do? You got to drill, the, you got to weld the holes closed again and then re-drill. A lot of trial and error, a lot of aggravation with that. It is a good solution. It's a standard solution for a full race cam, extremely low vacuum situation. That's, that's the standard traditional fix for it. But again, now, you've got a street car, and you have a mild cam, and it's right on the edge, and you're just a little bit fat. Here's the simplest, easiest way to clean it up, and it's to use one or even two of these. So what this is, is a regulator valve for a fish tank bubbler. I'm not a fish tank guy, so I couldn't tell you exactly why you put air in the fish tank. I, I guess the fish need oxygen, and this is the way to get to it. But this is how you regulate it. These are valves, and you can open and close the valve to regulate the amount of air that's blown through this device. Well, on your carbureted engine, you can use it. So remember, when we drill a hole here, all we're doing is taking air from the top side of the throttle blade and adding it to the bottom side of the throttle blade. Well, you could do the same thing with this externally. And what you would do, and here's, here's how we set one up over here, is you have your manifold vacuum. So this is, this is non-ported, meaning that it's just straight manifold vacuum, what the bottom of the throttle blade sees. And we've got this looped around to a ported vacuum source. So in this ported vacuum source, this is above the throttle blades, and this is dead. There's nothing to it. It's just, just, just a vacuum leak, really, until the throttle blades are open, and then air gets pulled through here. So at idle, this is just an open passage. Now what we can do is, by opening and closing this valve, we can create a, a minor regulated vacuum leak from the bottom of the throttle blades to the top of the throttle blades through this valve. And that's exactly what you're doing when you drill a hole here. Except that when you drill the hole there, there's no adjusting. You know, it is what it is. But, yeah. so, practical application here on Slaghammer, we run two of them. There's one on each carburetor. So, we got it to where it was idling good, it was idling about right, but it was just a hair on the fat side. So by adding these two valves and creating this controlled vacuum leak from the bottom to the top here, from manifold to, to ported, we were able to close down the throttle blades on each carburetor about a quarter to a half turn, and that gave us more range on our idle mixture screws. So now we were able to effectively really lean this thing down. So now it'll idle, it'll sit there and idle for an hour and not dirty the plugs. So in this situation, we used one on each carburetor. So let's just say you needed more than just what you're going to get through the one valve on each. You could add a second one, providing you've got a second manifold vacuum source. This is, this is just how it was done on this particular setup. It'll work on any carburetor, two barrel, four barrel, Carter, Edelbrock, Holly, doesn't make any difference. The, the concept is just to create a controlled vacuum leak. And you can add one, two, three, five, ten of these valves if need be for your situation, for your particular situation. So this isn't really like a how-to, I'm not telling you, here, do this to this. You're going to have to adapt this idea to your situation. But believe me, it works. If you're right on the edge there, if, you, if you've got one of those situations where the car is just idling just a little bit on the fat side and you need to clean it up, 
there you go. There's your solution. Uh, another benefit to this too is that one of the downsides of running carburetors as opposed to fuel injection is that the carburetor is, is subject to atmospheric conditions. So your idle quality on, let's say, a cool, crisp day where there's a lot of oxygen in the air is going to be completely different than your idle quality when it's muggy and, and humid and hot. Well, you can actually make cleanup adjustments based on atmospheric conditions by incorporating one or two of these into your induction system or into your, your intake so that instead of having to start screwing around with idle mixture screws, you just give it a little extra oxygen when it wants it and take a little oxygen away when it doesn't want it. Really versatile and simple and you can buy these things. You, know, you get a pack, I think there's a pack of seven of these. I got these on Amazon. They were like, uh, like $7, six or $7 for a, a pack of seven of them. So they're cheap. I, I haven't seen bigger sizes, but I don't really think you need a bigger size. This is this seems to work very well. I've, I've done this before. So, but anyway, simple hot rod tuning with pet store supplies, right? Only on UTG. I hope you got something out of that. I'll see you tomorrow.